quite long. Um, and you can, I, I'm not going to process it because I have to manage the technology as well. Um, uh, but well, um, thank you for gathering this day uh, in person and, um, uh, sorry, on site and online. Um, and hopefully this experiment works uh, because it's actually a manageable amount of technology compared to what I usually have uh, on Thursdays. So it's not any more than what I was doing uh, previous iterations of Thursday worship. So uh, your order of service you should have uh, received um, on the way in. I uh, will we'll pray this week according to the rites from the uh, Book of Common Prayer. Um, just to sort of uh, Close the circle from all the, the, the BCP worship we had uh, for the last six months. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll adopt a pattern of alternating that as we have usually done on Thursdays between the right book and the So I invite you to rise into our table and let us know. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like unto it, that shall love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech you. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, the Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant, Elizabeth, our queen and governor, that she, knowing whose minister she is, may above all things seek thy honor and glory, and that we and all her sins duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honor, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may turn to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the proclamation of the word. Our reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while we, the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall. And they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. 
those who observe the day, observe it in the honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat and eat in the honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in the honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we all stand before the judgment of the seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then each of us will be accountable to God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Lord, to the church. Thanks be to God. Psalm 114. Hallelujah, when Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech. Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his domain. Then the sea beheld it and fled. Jordan turned and went back. The mountains skipped like rams and the little hills like young sheep. What ailed you, O sea, that you fled? O Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains, you skip like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the hard rock into a pool of water and a flintstone into a flowing spring. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able for a reading from the Gospel. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. That same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slaves, slave fell and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will live for you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked sir, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And he became angry. His Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my Heavenly Father will do to you and to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, please do be seated. The 
the uh, reading I wanted to focus on uh, today was that epistle lesson that we heard from uh, Paul's letter to the church in Rome. It is uh, a, a lesson, I think, about forbearance um, and, and putting up with each other. Uh, it, uh, it says, I'll just read back. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. And then it goes on to talk about eating or not eating, uh, eating meat or, or only being vegetarian, uh, and, uh, and several other points of comparison that, that evidently the church in Rome was fighting. Um, this was the period in the life of the church where um, Jewish Christians, uh, Christians who had once been Jews, and Christians who had become Christian right out of some other tradition, um, were sort of at loggerheads about how to be a good Christian. Um, and the Jewish Christian faction thought uh, largely, not again, <laughs> with the microphone, uh, the Jewish Christian faction thought largely that, uh, that everybody should become a Jew and then become uh, a Christian. Uh, and Paul was trying uh, to settle that debate. Um, and he, he did it more definitively in, in one of his other letters, but here we get uh, some glimpse into his earlier thinking, I think, um, that we just, just tolerate each other. <laughs> uh, even if we disagree, it's not our job to have those thoughts. Um, it's not the various factions in the early church in Rome to have fights with the other factions in, with the church in Rome. Um, and I think there's some lesson in, in that for all of us. Uh, just by show of hands, uh, who has always been an angel in this room? All right, two. Um, I can't see the screen, uh, but I'm sure they're answering too. Um, and I know their stories well enough to know that none of them has always been so of the 15 or so of us who are participating in this service, only two of us has always been an Anglican or a Episcopalian or, you know, in, in the Anglican community. Um, and um, so all of us have worshipped God in ways that are very not Anglican. In, in, in our past lives, and some of us continue to do that in, in our ongoing life. Uh, I know uh, Gail, who, who checked all of you into the, this space, um, uh, continues to worship uh, in, in the, uh, the BME church uh, occasionally, as well as uh, Bishop Morton's church down the street. Uh, so the, Gail will. Um, and I don't know, I she won't mind me saying. Uh, she will, on any given Sunday, in, in sort of non-COVID time, find three different ways to worship God in a single Sunday. Um, she, she's very faithful and, and very uh, devoted to, to all of the communities that she supports. And I have, uh, one of the, the churches that, that she attends is a very Pentecostal sort of uh, church, uh, Bishop Mormon's church. Um, Whose name is the name of the church is space in the moment. Um, and I've been at a Pentecostal before, and it's very non Anglican. It is very non Anglican. Um, and, and there's lots that I can quibble about um, in the, the doctrine and the theology and the liturgical style and all of that. But I'm never going to have that fight with Gail. She ought to devote herself to the proper way of worshiping as we do it here. Like, I, I'm not that cool about myself, and, and Anglican should not be that cool of themselves, that, that we have the only way of worshiping God, because it's not simply not true. Um, and it hasn't been true since the first century, when, when Paul was writing to his church in, in Rome. Um, so it is not our job to judge others for the way that they offer worship to God. 
Um, we can query it and we can learn from it and we can grow from it and we can figure out how each way that we have in the past worshipped God, um, if we're now in the midst, uh, has fed us and brought us to be worshipped in this space and in this way. Um, but it is not our job, it's not my job, it's not our job, it's not anybody who's listening's job. Um, to judge others for the way that they offer their worship to God. Even if right now we're sharing space with each other, if, um, if you go from here and go to uh, Presbyterian or uh, Roman Catholic or uh, Pentecostal, uh, as the will do, um, if you're laboring, if, if God is being practiced, um, as Paul writes, um, do it in the honor of the Lord, and those who do something else, do it in the honor of the Lord. And since they're all, of their, all of the ways that we're giving thanks to God are giving thanks to God, then don't worry. It's not, it's not your job or my job to worry about how other people are giving thanks to God. Because we've chosen to give thanks to God and give praise to God in this world, and with each other, in this moment, um, it is. Um, I lost my sense. Sorry. <laughs> um, it is feeding us. It, it is giving thanks to God, and it is feeding us to be doing that activity. Um, and so, um, quarreling with others is not our job. Uh, as long as, as we can see that God is being praised and, and thanked for all that God is uh, in our lives. Um, and, if, and Peter's question to, to Jesus in our Gospel text, um, even if we find fault um, in, in somebody else, uh, the number of times we're meant to forgive them uh, for for the faults that, uh, that they have and for their injuries to us, um, as many as 77 times, or in other translations, seven times, 70 times. Um, there is enough forgiveness to go around for all of the faults that we could find with each other, whether it is in the way that we worship God uh, or the injuries that we do to each other. So. The good news. There is lots of forgiveness to go around, um, and you are the beneficiary of forgiveness as well as the issuer of forgiveness for injuries to each other. Um, and we are meant to bear with each other um, in love and in worship of God, uh, all to the honor of God. So know that you are forgiven. And that you are um, called to forgive each other um, and forgive those who would injure you. Forgive your brother or sister from your heart. With apologies for losing my hand. Our service continues uh, with the creed. I invite you to rise as you are able. Together, let us profess our. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of God, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, for whom all things were made. 
who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is saved by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we been. Let us pray. Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brothers and sisters who have departed this life and are at rest, remembering especially James. And let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church militant here in earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to lead all nations in the way of righteousness, and so to guide and to direct their governors and rulers, that thy people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. And grant unto thy servant Elizabeth our Queen, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, 
and especially to thy servant Todd our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy truth and the truth, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacrament. Prosper, we pray thee always to proclaim the gospel of thy kingdom among the nations, and to all thy people, to give thy heavenly purpose, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. And we most humbly beseech thee, thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and suffer all men who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those for whom our prayers are designed. We remember before thee, O Lord, all thy servants, depart of this life in thy faith and fear, and we bless thy holy name for all who in life and death have drawn by thee. Beseech we may give us grace that rejoicing in their fellowship, we may follow the good example, and with them be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator in death, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with him, and take this holy sacrament to your heart, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, the judge of all, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them, that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear now thy comfortable words, our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is me and right, so to you. It is very right and our God and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty everlasting God, Creator and Preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and dark angels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee, and say, Holy, 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 Lord of God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and 
Christ, giving me unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his contemplation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, completion, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine. According to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for me, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, we and thy humble servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee in this sacrament of the holy bread and eternal life and the cup of everlasting salvation the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching me to grant that by the merits of the death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. My spirit. We do not presume to come to this side's table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs of thy name, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may reward well in him, and you in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the beloved people of God. Thanks be to God. So, a few instructions about the reception of, uh, of communion. Um, I will. Uh,
come over here. Okay, so this guy's going. Um, and on in place um, enough waivers for your family group. Uh, please do come up as family groups. Um, David and Nancy can come up together. Um, and um, so one at a time, come up, uh, maintain your, your distances, and wear your mask as you're coming forward, uh, please. And uh, lift your mask off to consume. And there is a receptacle here for the, uh, the cup in which your labor has been in place. Uh, we found on Sunday the best way is to tip the, the labor into your, your palm rather than trying to scratch your hook down the base of the, the cup. To, so, at least you just tip up the, the wafer, uh, lift your mask and consume, and you have to take that in the receptacle. So, come forward uh, one by one for. Let us Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power of the Lord, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever living God. We most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously lead us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness toward us, and that we are living members of his mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs of the hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice of thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this our life in duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our rights. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom in thee and the Holy Ghost we all honor and Lord, we do not Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able for the blessing. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and the love of God, the God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be upon you this day, and remain with you all. Going to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. 